So we've heard from the mayors of some pretty big cities, Ottawa, population almost a million, Hamilton, population 540,000. Time to hear from one of our smaller cities. Matthew Shoemaker is the new mayor of Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, population 72,000. And he joins us now from the mayor's office at City Hall in the Sioux. Your Worship, it's good to have you on TVO again. How are you doing? I'm doing great, th Steve. Thanks for having us. It's a pleasure. Why did you want to run for mayor in the first place? Well, I'd been on council for a couple of terms and uh, got my my feet wet uh, trying to change uh, some of the things here around City Hall. And there was a vacancy in the in the mayor's chair coming up because our uh, incumbent mayor wasn't uh, seeking re-election. So I thought I still had more to give to the community and uh, and wanted to try my hand at uh, you know leading the council and seeing uh, if there was uh, a direction that we could. Uh, uh, steer our community in. Well, let me put this next question delicately, which is you're 34 years old. Did anybody ever say to you during the course of the campaign, you're too young to be the mayor? They've been saying that to me since I got on council when I was 24 <laughs> years old. So uh, I've never put too much stock in that. I think, uh, you know, I, I came to council, uh, uh, you know, on a promise to bring new energy and fresh ideas to council. I did that over the course of uh, eight years, I would say anyways. Um, and uh, I, I, I proposed the platform that I ran on, regardless of my age, and I was uh, grateful that it carried the day. Because of the age that you are at, and I'm going to ask our director, Sheldon Osmond, to bring this picture up, you had the uh, great pleasure of having both of your parents at your swearing-in ceremony, which is, of course, something not a lot of older mayors can necessarily experience. So how was that experience for you? Well, it was great. I mean, my parents uh, are the whole reason I'm I'm where I am today. You know, they raised me. Uh, uh, I I think they did a great job raising uh, all three of us, myself and my siblings, and uh, I'm I'm extremely proud of them uh, for how the values that they instilled in us and uh, the work ethic that they instilled in all of us. So I was I, it was emotional having them there. I was extremely happy to have them there. My mom, uh, as I've mentioned in the past came to Sault Ste. Marie from Italy in uh, 1969 at a young age. So uh, she uh, was born without anything and, and has come to the Canada and made a life for herself, come to the Sioux, made a life for herself. Uh, my dad worked at the steel plant his entire career and uh, together they were able to build good, solid middle-class lives and, and give us, their three kids, a better opportunity than what they had. Sheldon, I'm gonna ask you to bring that picture up one more time because that chain of office looks heavy. Is it as heavy as it looks? It's it's pretty heavy. It's a, a velour type uh, uh, red material and, and the chain itself is uh, pretty substantial. <laughs> what was it like to gavel in your first council meeting as the mayor in the mayor's chair? It was, it was good. A, a bit nerve wracking. I mean, that was the inaugural meeting that you just showed a picture of. So it was ceremonial more than uh, business-like, but uh, the next meeting a, a couple weeks later was uh, a little bit nerve-wracking. And, uh, you know, you I, I had sat through a lot of council meetings, but when you're sitting through a council meeting as a councillor, you're focused on, okay, you know, when's my turn to speak and what am I going to say? Whereas when you're sitting in the mayor's chair, you have to keep track of everybody's speaking order. You have to keep track of uh, where you are on the agenda in terms of uh, issues that have been discussed, issues that are are going to be pulled for debate. And uh, uh, it's really a lot more uh, organization of the meeting than it is uh, speaking on any specific mm. issue. Now, admittedly, you haven't had the job for even a year yet. So, um... But having said that, you are still probably in a position to now know what's possible that a mayor can do and what's really beyond the powers of a mayor to do uh, for a variety of reasons. What have you learned about that so far? Yeah, I, I think I had a pretty good sense of that from my time on council. I, uh, I, I, I you know, you, you delve into areas like... Um, uh, snow plowing is a big one in Sault Ste. Marie. You delve into those when constituents bring you complaints uh, over the course of the years and you determine, okay, well, this is really governance and this is really administration. So I had, I had had a good sense of that, but I think that there's an ongoing uh, learning about that issue. And, and uh, I would say that um, it's always, you're, you're always going to get a bit of pull and play on on that issue in terms of uh, the capital spends and, uh, and and things that, you know, constituents might bring to you that you'd like to see happen, but that are really, um, 
that are really within the administration's um, uh, wheelhouse to, to deal with things like sidewalk uh, maintenance uh, uh, schedules and 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 you know how how our public works does this or does that and our parks uh, or how our transit department runs the buses. Uh, those are all things that really the administration has to tackle, but they're the things that we get as concerns from constituents. So it's, you know, you have to you have to find that balance between those two things to be able to provide the customer service that constituents expect, while at the same time letting the administration run run the city. Sure. Well, let me raise a tougher issue, which is, uh, and we've covered this uh, many times on this program. There are mental health and addiction issues in almost every urban municipality and rural municipality, for that matter, uh, in this province today. How about in the Sioux? How tough an issue is it for you right now? Yeah, it's the top issue in the Sioux. It was the top issue for all the campaigns uh, for mayor, all the campaigns for council. It is the most pressing um, uh, and most difficult challenge that we have in our community. And the problem really is that we do not have the services in place that other communities do. So in our neighboring communities of Sudbury and Timmins, they've got uh, consumption and supply, consumption and treatment services for, um, uh, for folks who, who are drug users. But in Sault Ste. Marie, we don't have that. And in fact, Timmins, which had the highest rate of opioid overdoses and deaths in the province, implemented uh, consumption treatment services and brought that down. I it's still high. They're third or fourth in the province, but we are um, second in the north uh, in terms of in terms of death rate and opioid um, uh, overdose rate. So it's really a, it's a healthcare problem, but it's one that requires municipal involvement. Unfortunately, um, the province funds consumption treatment services, but the city has to put in the capital. So we have to have a building set up as a clinic, as a treatment space for the province to be able to fund it. And even when we do, what they found in Sudbury and Timmins is that provincial funding is uh, slow, to, slow to have the tap turned on. And uh, so it's been a problem in, in Sudbury and in Timmins, they've been paying for this uh, type of service themselves out of their municipal dollars. We don't have the capacity to do that. Um, and so we're putting in all the applications to the province to get those types of services here in the Sioux. But, uh, you know, it's going to depend on provincial help to actually help, you know, to actually uh, improve the situation. Well, not to put too fine a point on it, but you do have a provincial cabinet minister at the cabinet table who's the MPP for Sault Ste. Marie, uh, which is an unusual thing. The Conservatives don't normally represent that city at Queen's Park. So, I mean, I presume you are bugging the hell out of Ross Romano to get something done on this. What's happening? Yeah, and Ross and I, we, we speak uh, twice a week, most weeks. So I, I'm in close uh, communication with him. Um, he's on side in terms of uh, uh, the, the need for this type of uh, treatment service in the community. He's also on side with a number of other, you know, host of services that, that play into uh, that space because there's no, as I've told uh, many people, there's no one treatment or, or service that's going to uh, completely fix the problem. It's going to be uh, a, an entire menu of services that will help improve the situation. So he is on board with consumption and treatment services. He's on board with the return of what we called uh, the day treatment program here locally. Um, but, you know, the, the wheels of provincial bureaucracy uh, uh, turn slower than I think I would like. And certainly I think slower uh, I can I can represent slower than he would like. So it's just a matter of getting these things uh, in front of the minister's eyes, under the minister's nose continually so that um, the scope and the severity of the problem is is well understood. And that's what I've been trying to do. Anytime there's a minister that comes through town, anytime I have uh, our MPP on the phone, it's to reiterate the points so that it's uh, ingrained in their minds how severe and how uh, critical this of, a, of an issue this is in town. You know, the premier, Doug Ford, often boasts about the fact that everybody's got his phone number and any politician in the province can call him up whenever they want and he'll be responsive to them. And I have heard from numerous politicians that they do that and he is. Have you tried that yet? I have. In fact, I spoke with the premier uh, a month to six weeks ago, and uh, 
explained that this is the most critical uh, impressing need that we've got in our community. He understood it. I also spoke to him at the same time of the need and, and the desire of people in our community to see all of the Ontario Lottery Corp jobs consolidated into a single office in Sault Ste. Marie. We are the headquarters, at least that's what they call us, but we don't have any of the executives uh, in any of the uh, executive level uh, employees here in Sault Ste. Marie. So I raised those issues as well as a couple others with the premier when we spoke on the phone. And, uh, you know, he was cordial. He, he obviously understood that this is an issue, uh, the, the consumption and, and, and uh, opioid addiction problem is an issue across the province and advised that he'd be on the lookout for our application when it uh, is submitted for a, or a consumption treatment service uh, site. Um, but, you know, it was really, that's Minister uh, Jones's uh, wheelhouse, or that's Minister Tobolo's wheelhouse, so it's um, a lot of directing to the appropriate ministries, which I understand for a, for a Premier, um, but it, it's it's an issue that uh, I won't, uh, you know, I won't stop talking about until we've got the services available in the community. Gotcha. A couple of minutes left. Let's see if we can touch on two more things here. Uh, first of all, You've got this job, I guess, for another three and a half years. And then, I guess, if you like it and they like you, you'll seek re-election. How would you like the Sioux to be different three and a half years from now compared to what it was when you took over the job? I think the, the mental health and addictions crisis that we're facing, I'd like to see our, our stats on that front improve. I'd like to see fewer opioid overdoses and deaths. I'd like to see more available services to folks who are... Um, uh, in need of them. So I'd like the, it's really the lobbying uh, that, that is my responsibility to, to our provincial cabinet ministers and the municipality's responsibility that I'd like to push more aggressively on over the next three and a half years. That's things that are really external to our uh, ability to get done though. So municipally, I'd like to see, um, you know, some more recreational offerings in town. I, uh, proposed during the campaign, a, a, a municipal uh, urban waterfront uh, area, like a downtown beach type thing. I'd like to see that implemented, a trolley uh, or a hop on hop off uh, type service uh, to connect our uh, recreational facilities and museums and uh, and cultural offerings like our art gallery. There's, there's things within the municipal wheelhouse that uh, I'd like to see get done. And those are the things I've started uh, tackling um, in our community that, that we have direct control over and that hopefully in three and a half years, the Sioux will be uh, a, a healthier place, a safer place, and a place where there's more things to do than there has been for the last, uh, since, since I grew up here. Okay, last question. I know besides being a lawyer and besides being the mayor, you are a bit of an amateur historian, particularly as it relates to the Sioux, and I know you're a big fan of William Howard Hurst, who was the seventh premier of Ontario and from the Sioux. Uh, Sheldon, bring this picture up if you would. I note that you have two kids. One of them's named Hudson. One of them's named Maxwell. Do I infer from that that you were unable to convince your wife, Jenna, to name one of the kids Hurst? <laughs> so uh, both of them. So Hudson was our uh, was our first. Hudson's our oldest. And uh, we picked kind of like a, a Canadiana type name for him. Uh, Maxwell's my middle name, and so we uh, we passed on the family lineage with his name. But uh, I, I I don't think we're out, we'll ever have uh, uh, other children. Uh, but I could try kick at the can uh, if we ever do to see if Hurst will fit into the name uh, nameplate. Very disappointing, Your Worship. Very disappointing. I thought for sure Hurst would get in there somewhere. <laughs> I would try middle names, but it was all you know. With, with Hudson, we have uh, family lineage middle names. With Maxwell, we have uh, grandfather's names and things of that nature. So it's, uh, it just didn't fit. It just didn't fit. Well, I know Hearst is up we there have, somewhere shaking his head, but that's okay. We'll let you off the hook this time. Uh, we have honored Hearst municipally by uh, naming our civic holiday the Sir William H. Hearst Day. So we've, we've done that as a, corp as a corporate entity. Yeah, nice try, but that's not going to cut it. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it's good of you to spend so much time with us on TVO tonight. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Steve. That's Matthew Shoemaker, Mayor of Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.